May you all be welcome to one more transmission from the Instituto Vida para Todos. The general theme, the Gospel of John, word, edification, and life. Message number nine, my sheep know my voice and follow me. John, Depois que o Senhor Jesus After the Lord disse said para os que estavam ali to those who were there era a that he was das ovelhas e que ele era o bom pastor o he bom was pastor a good shepherd vida, and the good ovelhas, shepherd gives his life for the sheep suas ovelhas conhecem and the sheep suas ovelhas, the sheep know him, and he knows the sheep, and the sheep know him. So after saying all this, in verse 19, entering into today's message, because of these, uh, there, there was division among the Jews because of the, the saints. And many of them said, he has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? And others will say, There is not the word of one who has a demon. The Jews that were there around him, they could not understand what Jesus was saying. So there, who is walking in their flesh, as in Romans, Romans 8, what does Romans 8 say? For um, those they were carnal flesh they were carnal carnally minded their mind was towards the car carnal minded and not of the spirit because the carnal mind is uh, carnal is death but to be spiritual minded is life and peace Romans 8 6 if we put our mind in our flesh, it is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the... Uh, it doesn't matter if you try to do good things, be a good man, but if you are in the flesh, your thoughts will be in the flesh. And the result is that you cannot please God. This is why, brethren, the army, Paul, what he said to those who are in, the, in their flesh, that's found in Ephesians 6, 16. Take therefore the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. All in Ephesians. Ela tem apenas uma arma Six. ofensiva. There's only one weapon to defend, which is the sword, and that is the word. So to go against Satan and the empire of darkness, and people who are contaminated by the tree 
of knowledge, good and evil. They're in the sphere of the natural man. There's no other way to help them but to fight with the sword of the Spirit. This is why Paul, he did not lose time. 1 Corinthians. Ele Eu, irmãos, quando fui ter convosco anunciando-vos o testemunho de Deus, não o fiz com ostentação de linguagem e de sabedoria. Irmãos, não adianta você usar uh, uma linguagem, né? uh, If you super use refinada. Eu a very eloquent language to speak. Humana, If you know wisdom, a human wisdom. You will not be able to over, uh, overcome those that are in the flesh. That's why Paul said, My word and my preaching are not persuasive in the wisdom. It doesn't matter if you use persuasion or human wisdom, the human resources to fight for God, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power, so that our faith cannot be according to human knowledge, but according to the power of God. So if we use if we use persuasion, we will not we will not have uh, the correct result. And the correct result is that faith needs to be produced in the power of God. So to take forward his ministry, the Apostle Paul, he said that he were he rejected the things in Second Corinthians four. He said the following: since uh, verse one, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness. So it doesn't matter, you cannot use human craftiness nor handling the word. The word has to be pure, no God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. In the sight of God, this is what Paul, the Apostle Paul said. He would not use persuasive words or human wisdom, but he would recommend all the conscience of every man, he will present their conscience in the sight of God. So everything that he will speak, the truth was manifested. For who those who lose, the, the Lord, the Prince of this world, for the God who commanded light to shine in darkness has shone in the hearts of give the glory of Christ, which is in the image of, of, of God. This is a, a battle. There's a battle. He was there trying for the Jews, the leaders, to understand <laughs> his words that would come from God. He was a sent one of God. He came so that whoever believes in him could give eternal life. But it was really hard. It was a battle. And in that battle, the, 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 the Lord of this world blinded them. And so they were blind. This is why, brethren, Paul that's 2 Corinthians 10, 
But I beg you, when I am present, I may not be bold. I mean, with that confidence that which I intend to be bold against some who think of us if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down, pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. So what are these strongholds? And strongholds in Greek. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Oduroma, which means strongholds. It means a castle, a castle of arguments and reasoning to strengthen your opinion. So every natural man has an opinion. And he builds a castle. And that castle is built upon arguments and reasoning to give support to his opinion. Do you understand? These are strongholds. But the, what Paul presented as weapons can destroy these strongholds that can destroy uh, natural opinion, casting down arguments is the human logic, reasoning, thoughts, brethren, every human, human being, we have this habit to build this castle using our arguments to sustain our opinion, right? When two people start arguing, you're full of, of arguments and reasoning to sustain your opinion. And you have strongholds. And what does this mean? You use your human logic and your reasoning and your thoughts as a stronghold and no one else is able to touch you. Isn't, isn't it like this? When you fight with your wife or when you fight with your husband, usually uh, sometimes it's a very small insignificant thing that you, that you start arguing housing comes home and she's busy at, at the kitchen she doesn't even come to say hi and the husband comes to the kitchen they see each other and he doesn't even say hi okay and then uh, uh, the, the house starts to come down and has said i come home tired from work and you didn't, you didn't even come and say hi to me. And the wife says, don't you see that I'm busy, that I'm making dinner for you? I have to take care of the kids. I have to clean. Look, and also, what the, the, what, look what the dog did. I have to clean up. You don't help. OK, it's all, it's all done. There, you know that there's no end to this. You have experience, right? So each one gives her back to each other, and the more the husband thinks, oh, for this wife of mine, she has, she's not going to change. How can she do that to me? She, she did this already last time. And then you start building this castle of reasoning, reasoning, arguments, right? Reasoning, and it starts to build up and up and up. And your wife as well. Oh, my husband doesn't help me at all. He only 
And then you start building a castle as well. So imagine two castles that are way up high. They don't see each other anymore. You only see their reason. You only see each other's reasoning. Imagine in the church life. We serve one another in the middle of a castle. Satan just laughs. The empire of darkness always prevails. Christ cannot reign anymore. This is why the our weapons for warfare are powerful in God to destroy strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts every argument, every logical thing, right? It has more. I guess the knowledge of high thing that ex exalts itself. What is all these things that exalt ex itself? In Greek is hippisoma. What does that mean? It's a structure, elevated structure to protect. Whoever, uh, whoever is in the army knows that to protect an area, strategic area, you lift up a structure to protect it. And so you build a lot of things to protect your ego, right? You you built you build all these high things. Your ego, your ego needs to be protected by a high structure, so that no one can get to you. Everybody protects their ego. Have you perceived this? Everyone tries to hide of this high structure. So that no one can can touch your ego, your self love. No one wants to be hurt in their ego, but God wants to destroy it. And all how, um, against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The thoughts, your thoughts are, 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 are inside this castle, this stronghold. You were a prisoner. You were captive. You were captive. Of, you were held in captivity because of your reasoning. But now, the word of God is powerful and comes to destroy this stronghold, this castle, and I think the structure that protects your ego. So he's going to take that and take your thoughts to be captive to Christ, to captivate your, your thoughts to the obedience of Christ, all of Jesus. One time, once you obey Christ, there's no more problems. Ego is at the cross. Our arguments have been destroyed. Our reasoning has been destroyed. And, and wife and husband, the brothers and sisters, everything also, they become, everything becomes okay because everything is being captive to the obedience of Christ. Be ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So when we obey completely Christ, filling us with the word through the immersion of the word, the destroying all strongholds that protects our ego and our thoughts. We will obey Christ. When we obey Christ, Christ will head the church. It says here, we'll be ready uma vez completa a nossa submissão. 
Already uh, being ready to punish all disobedience when your disobedience is fulfilled. So why does why does Satan have so much so many strongholds on us? Why does he have so much territory in us to fight against the Lord? The Lord wanted to save the people. He loves the people, but he just found resistance, castles, strongholds. Right? Why? Because the problem started in Genesis 3. I read it many times when the serpent tricked Eve with his cunningness, convincing her to have desire, to have the same cap capacity of God. He, in a very subtle way, he said, because if you eat it, you'll be like God. You'll have the capacity of God. Who doesn't want this? Uh, knowing good and good and evil. This is a lie. This knowledge of good and evil is not the truth. It's false. All are Jesus. So he tricked them to eat and their eyes open. These eyes are open. This is not a good thing. This eye, the eyes to be open, They're the eyes of reasoning, of eat, of their ego, of argument, brethren. These eyes are just destroying things. They're destroying because the Jews said that they 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 were blind, but they kept saying they were not. So God just let them be continue to be in their sin. This is why I said Corinthians 11, 3. But I fear it leads somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness that your mind may be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. So the poison entered when Eve gave to his, to her husband. They both ate of the knowledge of true, uh, good and evil. And then the poison of Satan entered man's mind and, and corrupted it and took him away from the simplicity and pureness of Christ. Christ came with uh, saying words of life and to be able to give eternal life to people. But their mind were their minds were corrupted. They did not have the simplicity and purity regarding Christ to hear His words. So, how about today? Are you able to hear? I read many times this verse: the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Because they are, they are foolish and cannot understand them because they are discerned spiritually. So let's go back to John. I hope that you are understanding this small, this short introduction. I want you to see, I want you to know that between this discussion between the Jews and, and Christ and Jesus, they did not accept him. It seemed like they were speaking in two different languages. You know what is this? It's a fight of two kingdoms. Jesus came to give life to man. And this life, eternal life, man. Didn't Jesus tell this to Nicodemus? If someone born from the Spirit, Spirit will enter through the water, they will enter the kingdom of God. So the matter is kingdoms, is the battle of kingdoms. Why couldn't the Jews see? Why the, the God of this age blinded them? They didn't, he didn't want them to see. 
So I don't know if you uh, perceive, but there's a kingdom, uh, there's a battle of the kingdoms going on. This is what I want you to understand. So let's go to verse 22. Now, now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. The feast of dedication was not part of these seven feasts. What feast is this? The feast of dedication. So I will read. I'll read a note from the King uh, James. So before Christ, The king of Syria invaded Jerusalem, invaded Jerusalem, and then he took out everything from the temple. On the 25th of December, on the, 60, the year 60 before Christ, he sacrificed in the altar, and then he put an image profaning the temple. And three years later, he was he purified and restored the altar and the temple. So he established the the twenty fifth of December. Is that as the day of the the altar and temple, he established a day as a to initiate a sacred a sacred day. We'll have seven days to feast. This feast, sacred feast, is the feast of dedication mentioned here. This is in the time of Judah, Maccabeo, that he went in there and he purified and cleansed the temple. So it was winter. And then 23, verse 23, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. What is this porch? What is this porch? Who knows? What is Solomon's porch? It's a place where Jesus, they would meet there. So in Acts 3, 11. Acts 3, 11. 3, 11. Now as a layman who, and all people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's por, Solomon's porch. And also, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 12, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So what is Solomon's porch? The porch is a structure, a great structure that sustains in the porch of Solomon, it was a space covered in the entering the temple. Let's say that here, 
is the temple. And the temple, no, not just anyone could enter. Only the high priest who was serving the temple could enter. So the people would stand outside. And so Sagon was outside and it was really a big uh, place. Jesus there will, free, uh, will go there frequently. And then the, the primitive church will meet in that space. É como se fosse um saguão da entrada de um auditório como este. Então foi ali, só para vocês entenderem. It was a be a porch, like an auditorium, like the one we have here. So verse 24. Os judeus e o interpelaram. Até quando nos deixarás a mente em suspenso? So I just surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. But Jesus said so many times. And they could not, and they didn't, could not believe or accept. So finally, they, they said, you, are you or are you not the Christ? Jesus answered them, I told you. And you do not believe As obras, the works that I do, As obras que eu faço, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So everything I do here, I do it. The works that I do, I do it in, in, the, in the Father's name. And they testify, they bear witness that I'm sent by the Father and you don't believe. On the other hand, Jesus did not assert the, uh, the authority of the works. The works that Jesus would do, he always said they would come from the Father. All miracles and signs. The blind could see. The paralytic who could walk. All these works, the Father is the one who did it. And the Father does it through me. So it's why you need to believe that I'm the sent one of God. I'm Christ. And they could not believe. All of Jesus. So they're brothers. So you do not believe because you're not my sheep. All of Jesus. Here is a turning point. Maybe you read the Bible and you've never seen this before. Here is a separation of waters. Jesus gave priority to the Jews so they could receive the Lord, so they could have eternal life. And there are many tribes, and Jesus insisted was the signs and more and more miracles and signs more miracles and signs and they did not believe and they did not believe because they are not his sheep so uh, starting at this point at this point practically jesus is saying uh, jesus just disconnected and now he's going to go to his sheep you will understand now, my sheep, they hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. How do you know that they're sheep of the Lord? My sheep, they hear my voice, they hear the word, they love the word, they appreciate the word. They, they go to sleep here in the Word. They wake up here in the Word. They immerse in the Word. They transcribe the Word. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. The Lord knows you. And they follow me. Who follows the Lord? Who, who follows the word? Who practices the word? 
These are the sheep of the Lord. Starting from now, now that the Jews rejected, rejected, kept rejecting and rejecting, he said, okay, now I'm going to go after my sheep. I give them the eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Oh, Lord Jesus, what a security. The Lord is saying, I'm going to tell you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them from my hands. You are in my hands. That's the Lord. We're in the hands of Jesus. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hands. Are you, you're not only in the hands of the Lord, you're in the hands of the Father, you're in the hands of God. And no one can snatch you away. Because I and my Father are one. All are Jesus. All are Jesus. So who are those that follow? They're the ones who love the word. They know the voice of the Lord. They immerse in the word. They inculcate the word in their heart. These are There's the ones that are mentioned already. I, I want to read. It says here, no one can come to me if the Father who sent me does not bring him and I will resurrect in the last day. These sheep are those who the Father brought to the Lord Jesus to care for. And then we be all taught by the Lord how in Deuteronomy 8 inculcating the word in their heart. So, so whoever has been taught by the Father comes to me. It's a battle of kingdoms. How does God take you away from the kingdom of Satan? When you become that you confess that you're blind, that you want to be cured, that you're a paralytic, a paralytic of 30, like the paralytic of 38 years, and you want to be cured, the Lord comes and cures you. And you can even be expelled by the Pharisees, but the Lord brings you into his flock. John, John 6, still. So so praise the Lord, if you're here following the Lord, it's because the Father gave you to the Lord Jesus. John 17. John 17. Verse 6. Who are these? I have manifested your name to the men who you have given to me out of the world are you part are you these are, the, are you part of these men i want to be one of these they were they were yours you gave them to me and they have kept your word have you kept the word 
Do you love the word? Do you immerse in the word? Do you inculcate the word in your heart? It says here, they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words which you gave them me. And they have, we receive the prophetic word that comes from the Father, right? And they have received them. Have you received them? I'm just, I'm just confirming if you're one of these and have known surely that I have come forth from you and they have believed that you have sent me. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Jesus did not pray for the world, but he prayed for you. And all of my, mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they, these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are, as we are. The desire of God is that those who separated his sheep, may we, we become one, there be no more division. There will be no competition, there will be no jealousy, envies, but only love. Let's be one. What else? Where am I? I'm a little bit lost. Twelve, right? Well, I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those who you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the sub perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Right? But, brethren, here is referring at the 12, right? When Jesus asked in chapter 6, You also want to leave? And Peter said, Who will we go to? You have. The words of eternal life. But some verses, John, who wrote the Epistle of John, explains that Judah would betray. So within those, we're not 12, but 11. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. They have given them your word, and the world has hated them. Have you been expelled by the Pharisees? Has, does the world hate you? Be, because they are, are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. We're also not of the world. The world hated Jesus, and it will also hate us. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. You are not of this world. Don't love the world or the things that are in the world. We are not of the world. Sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray that alone, but for those who will believe in me through their word. The word sanctifies us. The truth sanctifies us. We are being sanctified. See how much care Jesus has for these. He prays so much for these. And who are these? Apparently it's these 11 apostles. But within these 11 is included, you and I are included. 
I do not only pray for these. I do not pray for these alone in 11, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Through what? Through their word. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you have given me, I give them. That they may be one just as we are one. I will explain better when I will come to this chapter. I'm only reading so that you can have an idea. In them and you in me, that you may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. Who are these? Who are these? So they can see their glory, which are given to me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. I will not continue reading. You know, you know already what I'm talking about. The brother, brothers, the Lord is wonderful. Let's go back. Aí, versículo 31, novamente, pegaram os judeus em pedras para lhe atirar. Irmãos, o que, que é isso? They took stones. To stone. What is this? Jesus giving them opportunities to receive eternal life. Sair do reino de Satanás, entrar para o reino de Deus, mas eles eram controlados. But they were controlled by the devil because they the font, their fountain is a knowledge of good and evil and then Jesus answered them many good works I have shown you for my father from which of those works do you stone me the Jews answered him saying for a good work we do not stone you but for the blasphemy and because you, being a man, make yourself God. And Jesus answered them, It is not written in your law, I say, you are gods. If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you're a blasphemy? Because I said, I am the Son of God? Brethren, could it be the Jews who say, who say that they know so much of the scriptures? They said, the Pharisees who said they were specialists in the scriptures. They do not know then the prophecies of Jesus that he was the son of God. It says that he would be called the son of the most high. You think they did not read the scriptures? Oh Lord Jesus. So, Isaiah, Isaiah 6. Sorry, Isaiah 9. And verse 6. Oh, Senhor Jesus. É uma luta de reinos. Tá difícil. It's a battle of kingdoms. It's difficult. It's difficult. Versículo 6. Uh, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, the government, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Do, do you perceive that the, here it says about a, a child? A child is born, a child that was born from a virgin, and a son 
is the son of the Most High, son of God. And immediately, this verse takes you to government. The problem is in government. Jesus came to bring the gospel to the Jews. It's to bring the kingdom of God to them. But they were governed by Satan. They were governed by the father of lies because they still lived by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what is right and what is wrong. So they were blinded. Their eyes were blinded by the God of this age. So they could not see what Jesus wanted to do with them, which was to bring the kingdom of God. So it's a battle of kingdoms. But Jesus will not come out defeated. He will find his people. He will establish his kingdom, right? The garment is upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward and forever The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord will do this. No matter the, how great a resistance Satan did among the Jews, God is doing this. He's fulfilling this among, uh, within our days. The child is born, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 23. He wants to be king. He wants to govern. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are here to make him king. 1.23 Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. In Luke chapter 1, when they prophesy about Jesus, Luke 1, 31. When the angel uh, Gabriel went to Nazareth of Galilee and visited Mary, who was dethroned to Joseph, this angel Gabriel told her, Rejoice, highly favored one, and the Lord is with you. And she was troubled at his saying. And then he said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. 
Jesus veio para Jesus came to take on this kingdom and the devil creating resistance through the Jews. Quem vai vencer? Who will overcome? Who will overcome this war? All the Jews. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Verse 6 through 8. Eu disse, sois Todavia, como homens, morrereis, e como qualquer dos príncipes, haveis de sucumbir. Levanta-te, ó Deus, julga a terra, pois a ti compete a herança de todas as nações. Irmãos, Brethren, nós homens, as men, criados, em Gênesis, we are created. Versículo 7, ali diz que Deus fez o homem do povo. Says that God made man from the dust of the ground as breath into his nostril, the breath of life, and man became a living being. Thus, brother, man was created by the breath of God, and this is an eternal God. He's in the mansion of eternity. In this, in this meaning, we are gods because our spirit and our soul are eternal because it comes from the breath of God, the God, eternal God. Ecclesiastes 3 says what? Ecclesiastes 3, no coração do homem. Sem que esse he put eternity in man's heart. As obras que Deus fez, desde o princípio até o fim. From the beginning Nós to the end. Temos algo we have no já, no something nosso. eternal in our spirit Sabe and in our soul. Deus Did you know Deus about this? Deus we are God. In this Deus meaning, Deus. we are God. No entanto, However, however, there still needs God, God himself needed to generate a God, uh, his son within us. And he said this to Nicodemus. You need to be born from, from high. But now, you need to believe in Jesus to receive what receive the eternal life so that you can be born from high from up high so in the, in the first meeting we are gods but on the other hand for us to be sons of god we need to receive god's life okay so one day when all man dies this is why i read ecclesiastes 2 7 when the man's body dies, dust will go back to dust as it was, and the spirit will go back to God who, who gave it. Man was created as a God, but there is lacking the life of God in the new birth. Thus, is necessary for man to be born of the Spirit, to be governed by the Spirit. How, how, how will Jesus establish his kingdom here on earth? How will men, how will he establish here on, on earth? How? Making you be born of the Spirit. You did not perceive this yet? This, so let's go back to John 3. I wanted to avoid reading, but let's, let's just go there. John 3. John 3. 
Verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Brethren, God created you as a God by breathing into you his breath. And one step is missing is to enter into the kingdom of God. How can you enter? You need to be born again. And how can you be born again? Is that you need to believe in Jesus. You need to be born of high, from high, up high. And then verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When you were, when you were born from high, you, you did not perceive that from that moment on, you're part of God's kingdom. And what does it mean to be part of God's kingdom? Who knows? You are governed by God. His government was established in you. This is why it says here, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. And then eight, the wind, of, the wind blows where it wishes. You do not know, you, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is Aaron who is born of the Spirit. So whoever is born of the Spirit cannot do what, what they want. They don't, they don't obey the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They don't obey their flesh. Who is born of the Spirit walks in the Spirit. You are under another government. You are another kingdom. Oh, Lord Jesus. This is Psalms 2, as you already read. Psalms 2. God's objective. Verse 6. Sobre meu santo monte Sião, proclamarei o decreto do Senhor. Eu, eu, ele me disse: Tu és o meu filho, e eu hoje te gerei. Pede-me. You are my son, and today I'll give you the nations as inheritance. Como vara, com vara de ferro as regerás e as despedaçarás como um vaso de oleiro. Irmãos? The entity is like a potter's vessel. A vontade de Deus. Brother, brother, the the will of God is to establish a government and establish him as a king, as a true king of Judah, as a true of the king of David. And his kingdom will be forever. So the Jews who are blinded by the God of this age, they were used to frustrate God's plan. They wanted to arrest him and even to kill him. So I went, I took you to Isaiah, but I, will, I did not emphasize it enough. Or I, I don't know if you understood. So the, king, the emphasis is in the kingdom and in the government. So I will read once again to put emphasis on, on kingdom and government. Be, for unto a child, why did a child, why was a child born from a virgin? A son is given. Why did God give us the son of, of the Most High? And the government will be upon his shoulder. The coming of Jesus is to carry a government. He does wonderful things. He did wonderful things. He is wonderful. Only God can be the counselor of God. 
Então, ele é o um maravilhoso conselheiro, ele é o um Deus forte. De um lado, ele é um menino, mas, por outro lado, ele é um Deus forte. Por um lado, ele é um filho, mas, por outro lado, ele é o pai da eternidade. He's a strong ele man. É o príncipe da paz. Quando ele governar, irmãos, haverá justiça, haverá juízo e um governo que tem justiça e juízo, o resultado desse governo, irmãos, é paz. The result of this government para que se aumente o seu governo e venha a paz sem fim. A paz without end. Trabalhando, irmãos, We're here to working for Christ to, to take on his kingdom and every member of the body of Christ and each one of us by mercy in, in the word by focusing in our heart God is filling our heart every space with reality of God and in this way he is heading up us in reality e por meio de nós, nas ruas, and through us, pregando o evangelho do reino, as we preach the gospel in the street, gaining more people Glória for him, always oh, Jesus. Venha paz sem fim sobre o trono de Davi. Come in peace without end. Reino, para o estabelecer e o firmar mediante o juízo. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, in order, to order it and be established the judgment. This will happen forever, for that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It's better if you come to the overcoming team. The overcoming team is where, is where the zeal of the Lord is. Oh, Lord Jesus, so let's end. Let's end in John 10. Lord Jesus, John 10, verse 39. In this point, I don't know if I read 38. Okay, 37. If I do not do the work of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Right? Brethren. John 14. John 14. It says the following. Verse 10. You don't believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? And when Jesus said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then verse 8, where he says, Lord, so it said, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And then Jesus was upset. He said, Philip, have I been with you so long, and yet you have known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father in me? The Jews could not imagine that Jesus and the Father were one. Who so was talking with him was Jesus, but it was actually the Father himself through Jesus. Look how many uh, uh, offense and blasphemy against Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. So let's continue. 39. They were... Novamente se retirou para além do Jordão, para o lugar onde João batizava no princípio e ali permaneceu. Onde que é esse lugar? E ele remained there. Do Jordão. Eu já tinha lido uma vez que Jesus I already have read it once. Para um outro lugar chamado Betânia, não é o Betânia perto de Jerusalém. It's not Beth Bethany of Jerusalem, but Bethany. It was the side the east of Jordan, where John was baptized. And so Jesus would leave 
Jordan. Tá? E to the other side of the Jordan. And he said, really, truly, John did not do any sign. Aí, 42, e 11, é interessante. 42, and it was interesting. And many believed in him there. Many believed in him there. Brethren, Jesus, therefore, goes to the temple and goes away east of the Jordan. It's an indication. I want this to be very clear. If you don't have the revelation of light, you will read and not understand. It says here, and he went away again beyond the Jordan. He was talking to them. He was talking to them in the temple of Solomon's church, right? Wasn't Jesus it? Uh, talking with them in Solomon's court. Right. Jesus would talk with them, and now Jesus left. He left the temple and went where? Went beyond the Jordan. Do you know what that means spiritually? Do you under, do you, can you think about what that means? And that means that Jesus finally broke all ties with you. He spoke among them, right? He, he humiliated, humiliated himself. He spoke again and again, but they continued in their blindness. They were blinded by the God of this age. They could not accept Jesus. So Jesus went where? He went. He went to seek who truly who truly want to receive him. Jesus, from now on, he will go seek the truth. And the first are here. And many, and many believed in him. And many believed in him there. So after chapter 11, 11 12, you will see that Jesus was no longer arguing with the Jews. He was in the um, environment of a family, people who loved him. He was among people who appreciated the word of Jesus. Jesus changed. He changed his course. Now he was going to seek his sheep. All are Jesus. This is why I hope that you and I could be one of those that the Father brought, gave to the Son, be his sheep, that hear his voice, and follow him. We are the sheep that we know, we know his, their pastor, their shepherd. May we follow this shepherd until the end, until he becomes king. We're here working for his garden to increase. For Christ reigning, I mean, start here. I mean, never end. Jesus is Lord. 